It is Thursday evening here, uh, probably afternoon for Pete, if I'm correct. That is correct. But it's been a pretty long week here for me. I don't know about you all. How's your week been? There's something in the air. You are correct. It has been a very, it's Thursday. I feel like it's Sunday already. I don't, it's been a long week. <laughs> wow. Well, definitely. But today we have Pete Capella on. And I hope I'm saying that right. Yep. Pretty sure I am. <laughs> you are. But one thing I do want to ask you, because I did notice it in the bio that we got from you. Mm. Let's talk a little bit about this vinyl collection you have. So obviously yeah. you're a big music fan. I'm a big music fan. Uh, my vinyl collection is uh, at uh, around 500 records right now. The only reason it's well, not more is because my wife won't let it be more, <laughs> uh, <laughs> which I understand. We only have so much room. Uh, and that actually doesn't take up too much room. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I, when I was a kid, I started listening to my dad's vinyl records and I never fell out of love with it. So even when no one was buying vinyl, I was still going to, um, you know, like Salvation Armies and stuff like that and picking up any vinyl that I could. And now I have a nice little collection. Very nice. So I did notice that you also like to play music. I do. I do. I, I That doesn't mean I'm good at it. it just means <laughs> I like to play it. Uh, so I've been playing you know guitar uh since high school so i should be good but i'm not i just play chords uh and um yeah i love i actually like singing more than anything else uh i, I like last night i had a uh a, a musical improv show i do a musical improv show every month uh in los angeles uh, like wayne brady stopped by a couple months ago and guested in the show um Ooh. it's fantastic it's a fully improvised broadway musical now, that's interesting because I do know a lot of voice actors and a lot of them do take up singing. Yeah, uh, it, so. it helps me keep my voice trained, you know, like it's it's an exercise. It's like it's like working out. It's a muscle. So uh, you want to work it out as much as possible, which is why I play guitar and sing by myself in the house, you know, just just to keep that that uh, muscle going. Very nice. And like I said, music is one of my Pine points. Yes, I do listen to a lot of country, but I also Great. listen to everything else. So I bet I you listen to the same type of country I listen. I, I like I like everything as well, but I feel like you're an old school country guy. Boom. Legends. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Johnny Cash. Yes. Merle Haggard. <laughs> yes. Yes. Absolutely. Dolly. And of course, unfortunately, we lost Loretta. Yeah. But legends, just absolute legends. Yes. But it looks like we're getting a few questions here. Have you great. heard of the Animaniacs? You, know, you want to know uh, what's, uh, I have a great Animani An Animaniac story. So first of all, have I heard of it? I was in high school when Animaniac came out and it was like everything to me. I loved it so much. Uh, and then a couple years ago, uh, I became friends with Kevin Michael Richardson, who's a big voice actor. Uh, and <laughs> Kevin introduced me to Tom Ruger, who is the creator of Animaniacs. And I have been to Tom's house. And actually, when the pandemic first started, he sent me uh, an Animaniacs mask for for the pandemic. Uh, so <laughs> I have very much heard of Animaniacs. Oh, well, what's the, what if you play Remember Me from Coco, the lullaby? <laughs> I don't think we're going to do any singing today. No, we're not going to do any singing. <laughs> I, I sang enough last night. Uh, he's the best silver voice actor to ever exist. Well, thank oh. you, Noah. I appreciate that. Also, hi, Noah. I know you wanted me to say hi to you, and I'm, it's my <laughs> pleasure to say hi. Now, to let everybody know, Amy's going to be joining probably in a little bit. She has a meeting, so... But let's talk about some stuff that may be coming up because I did notice a few shorts on your IMDb. Yeah, you know, uh, it's a constant hustle out here. Uh, so uh, almost every day I'm auditioning for TV or film. Uh, and then in there's no longer, there's no such thing as just being an actor anymore, you know, uh, which is a good thing. You're an artist. So um, you're taking most of your, sorry, my dog just came back in the house. Uh, <laughs> uh I spend a lot of my time uh, trying to create uh, films. So uh, my wife and I have a small production company. 
Uh, so we write, uh, we, we write films, we write TV, uh, we're pitching a show right now. Um, but, and then as far as the shorts go, you know, anytime there's an opportunity to, to do good work, I make sure I take that opportunity. So I have a short playing at a festival, uh, literally tomorrow Mm -hmm. night. Uh, so this weekend I'm, I have a short in a festival that's doing really well. It's making its rounds in the festivals. Uh, I have another one. Yeah. To be released soon. Uh, yeah. So, you know, it's great. I love it. Now that's interesting. Cause I'm actually an author. Oh, cool. And you were talking about writing the screenplays and let's talk a little bit about the difference between writing a book and writing a screenplay. I would love that. Cause I know, the screenplay is a little bit more difficult because you actually have to write each scene. Yeah, but I don't, is it more difficult? I mean, it's just different. I, like it, to me, taking on a novel is the scariest thing I could possibly think of. Uh, you know, where I'm, I'm you know, if, if you're writing an hour show, you're really kind of coming in at about 45 to 50 pages. Um, mm-hmm. So the idea of coming in at, 350 pages to me that sounds bonkers and scares the living hell out of me and also your pages are filled with words mine are filled with stage directions and characters and it's spaced out all crazy so uh to take on uh, actual novel writing uh, scares the living hell out of me yeah that's interesting because it Writing a script, it actually scares the hell out of me. <laughs> <laughs> because there is such a big guess. difference. I mean, to me, sure. writing the words is just, it's a, for me, it's a flow. Yeah, yeah. And, but writing each scene, it's like my brain just couldn't comprehend that. I, you know, I guess as an actor as well, I mean, and I, I, I've studied a lot of taking classes uh, on all of the above. Uh, and so, Um, as a writer, I kind of feel like I know where that scene should go. Um, so yeah, it just becomes just like a novel. It it is a, some of the stuff is a little formulaic, you know, uh, where certain things should happen, uh, in each beat of the story. Uh, I, I'm sure it's the same in a novel. I've just never tried to write one. Uh, poetry is the, the farthest I've gotten in anything that isn't a script. (laughs) What kind of novels do you write, Greg? I write, I have have two full novels, which is both fantasy fiction, young adult fantasy fiction. And then I have a novella, which is a Western. Awesome. So cool. Mm -hmm. The uh, Western actually won best young adult Western in the state of Texas, which was actually during the pandemic. Wow. (laughs) Can we, can we find it? Like, can we buy it on Amazon? It is on Amazon. And I actually had a, it is on Audible also, which is a, Cool. done by a broadway actress up in new york very cool okay well, so. pitch it plug it i want what, what <laughs> oh, that's awesome. hey, you never know what we're going to talk about on this show that's right <laughs> yeah but. i can kind of relate to the both of you because um i also write but for my online adventures of sonic the hedgehog comics oh, i have cool. to write that script and i have friends who read it and you know you, you do give them direction because you because i tell them well remember Go back on YouTube and watch the old Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog series to, you know, to get an idea of Sonic's, um, his um, personality and how you would see the scene in your head because it's, it's more quirky, funny, slapstick, mm-hmm. funny cartoon. Mm-hmm. So a lot of them will read the script, go, hey, this is great. And then you go from that into a comic. And, and you know, it's a little bit shorter. So when I write everything, they go, this is too long. I go, well, it's supposed to be long, but you read through it, and and then they say, "Well, just write something and then explain underneath what Sonic or Lizzie or Doctor Robotnik is doing." And that's actually a lot of fun. It's challenging with comics because you know you have to see it visually in your head first before you can visually draw it. Mm-hmm. Yes, but it's a lot of fun. Yeah, that's great. Yes, and to me, comics would be more like the scripts with movies. So. Mm-hmm. Right. It's a little bit more visual. Yes, correct. Yeah, yeah. Even more so than than, than movie scripts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But did you ever enjoy playing Sonic 2006 or did you ever play it? <laughs> <Never> play it. <laughs> of course I played it. I played it up until I wasn't good at it anymore. So I played through, uh, you know, as much of the story as I could. I don't remember where I got stuck, but I got stuck somewhere and just gave up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Let's see. I never played it, but my brother Googled a meme six years ago. I used the audio of the boss fight, then Silver deals with poor kids under age of four with assistance from Blaze. <laughs> so would you say we'll go ahead and start talking about Silver? Because I know everybody's dying to hear about Silver. Sure, <laughs> yeah. Which, uh, let's just go in and start it this way. Which is your favorite character from Sonic? Would it be Silver or is it, it another I, one? I mean, it is only because, um, I, you know, it might even be even if I didn't voice it. Because I love the concept of uh, this rogue kid from the future who travels back in time to try to save his future. I think that's a really cool concept. Um, and I like, you know playing a teenage hedgehog is really fun because I think it's, you know, he makes mistakes. And I think there's a lot to that. I think there's a lot to, uh, you know, he go uh, in, you know, if you know the story, he goes back to kill Sonic the Hedgehog because he is duped mm -hmm. into thinking that he's the reason why the future is bad. So he, he's just this, you know, hard headed kid who goes back with something and then learns a lesson along the way and teams up with Sonic to fight for the right thing. And I love the complexity of that for a video game character. Mm -hmm. Nice. So do you think that you'll ever do any voices for silver other than video games or. I, I mean, I would love to anything that people want me to do for silver. Like, I, you know, if, if, if Sega wanted me back in any way, shape or form, I would love to come back mostly because like, you know, as I, I've talked about this in other interviews, but um, when, when we first got, when I first got the gig, so it was 2005, um, I was younger, so I was not mm -hmm. as trained and, and, and stuff like that. But more importantly, I don't think, they really made it clear about what they wanted or how important this character was going to be. It was just, it was, there was a, there was a Japanese director, a translator, and then an American director in the, in the booth. So mm -hmm. um, it was a lot of like trying to get the communication right as to what they wanted. And I wasn't given any, you know, I was just kind of given the script and said, Hey, read this mm -hmm. at first. <laughs> so I, I would have done things a lot differently had I known the entire story, I kind of got things. I didn't get the script ahead of time. So I didn't know like what anything meant when w that first line that I recorded. And I, I went and I think I just, if I remember correctly, I just recorded the one line and that was, I finally found him the Iblis trigger. And that's what premiered at E3 that year. So when the Sonic, the head, head or Sonic 06 trailer came out at E3, it finished with silver standing, you know, on the cliff saying, I finally found him the Iblis trigger. I didn't know what the hell that meant. I, I had no <laughs> idea what I was talking about. Um, so, you know, I, I would love to just revisit and know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of that, let's talk about the boost because I know everything has changed from before pandemic to after pandemic. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about how the difference is for you and how it affects you with the, if, well, everything's different, um, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, so when I was doing, uh, I know I pray for the same thing. Um, <laughs> uh, when I was, well, so you know, the, when I did that first, when I did that first uh, uh, recording, that was on the East Coast. So I was living in New Jersey. I was commuting up to New York to do shows and to audition and to shoot things. And so I recorded uh, Silver in two thousand. Five uh, in New York. Uh, it was the dead of winter. Uh, oh. I, I was sick as hell. Uh, I was very much <laughs> struggling to make that voice happen. Um, oh. But it was a. It was at Four Kids Production, so we recorded at Four Kids. So that's where uh, uh, we they did Ninja Turtles, uh, Yu Gi Oh, uh, just like a bunch of different cartoons there. Pokemon. Uh, yeah. a po Pokemon. <laughs> Uh, it mm -hmm. was awesome. It was so great. The people there were so wonderful. Um, my director was incredible. Everyone was just lovely. And um, I was at a giant, beautiful booth, and we were in person, you know? So everything was in person. Uh, the internet was just really coming to fruition as a place to cast people from. So uh, I, I had a demo tape, and I submitted it through 
uh, what's called NY casting now. And there's an NY casting and an LA casting. Um, and I, you know, I couldn't believe when I got called in to that, to four kids and they kept calling me in for, uh, for Ninja Turtle. They called me in for a lot of different things, but they also called me in. Uh, I've told this story before, but they called me in for a lot of big, deep enemy voices. Mm-hmm. I, and I was walking out of the studio and I'm talking about like I had recorded an audition for Ninja Turtles. I was almost out the door and they were like, hey, Pete, 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 wait, wait, wait. Um, would you mind coming back in and trying a voice for this 14 year old hedgehog? And I was like, oh, yeah, I guess, you know, of course. Um, and it's, it was the exact opposite of what I was just reading for. And they were like, he's kind of like anime ish. And that's where his voice came from. Now, uh, now that I have to have an in-home setup, um, uh, you know, I've turned a walk-in closet into a booth. Uh, mm-hmm. Everything is sent in uh, via self tape. And that goes for TV and film as well. Uh, every audition that I have now I'll say 99.99% of the auditions I have now are self tapes. You tape from home. So I the wow. the lighting I have lighting me up right now is part of my self tape lighting. You know what I mean? Like, yes. so we have a whole light set up. We have, uh, you know, our, our sound set up. We have painted a wall, mm-hmm. a certain color, a neutral color to audition in front of. Um, everything is sent in from home. So you have to have quality enough to send in your auditions or whatever you're recording from home. The, the lovely thing is all of the technology is so prominent that it's all gotten a lot cheaper. So back in 2006, if I want, or five, when I want, if I wanted a home setup, I would have had to spend $10,000. Now you can take a thousand dollars and turn it into a really good setup. Mm-hmm. That actually brings to another question. Cause you said you actually have to do it for the acting as well. Mm-hmm. Do you have a green screen that you have to put up to do that? Or can you do it with just the lighting? And we, so what we did was we painted, we, we, we experimented and to, as to what looked best. And we painted a wall dark gray and we have a three light system. So we have a ring light that we shoot through and we have two soft lights on the side. And then we also have, just it depends, I guess, on the project. But if it's a little bit more of a dramatic project, we have an orange light that kind of comes in from the side to make it a little bit more dramatic. Um, but oh. just painting a wall like that, just a matte color, is what works best. So basically, you have silver behind you. That's correct. That's <laughs> right. I never thought of it that way, but that's right. I can imagine that silver is a father who almost thirty-one with four kids, a daughter who's almost five, a son who almost <laughs> Wow. <laughs> that's a future but, I haven't thought about. But that's actually kind of a, a great setup, actually. And I never yeah. would have thought about painting the wall silver. Yeah. It's, or yeah, gray. It's, Sorry. Gray. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. Because it, <laughs> yeah, it can't be reflective either. It, it's mm-hmm. just you want something that makes you pop in front of it. So, um, you know, like this. If, if I took this down and I had this mustard color, I don't really pop. It kind of blends in with your skin tone or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah. in front of the gray, you really pop out. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Because the yeah. green screen, I can see the, why they do the green screen. That's right. Yeah. Yep. But, well, what about conventions? How often do you go to conventions? Whenever I'm invited to them and I love <laughs> doing them. I, I really do. I, I, and I, I know we were talking about this earlier before the show, but... Um, mm-hmm. I love the idea that people are in one place to (laughs) celebrate one thing. So Mm -hmm. they're so passionate about this thing, whatever it may be, that they've come from all over the world to come celebrate it. Um, And so when I was first doing this, you know, I was a I was a grumpy New York actor who (laughs) thought I was supposed to suffer all the time. So. Uh, when it came to like really indulging myself in in in, uh, in the convention stuff, I was like, well, I don't want to only be known as Silver the Hedgehog, because uh, I, I, I'm an actor. Uh, and in the end, I realized that's just silly because not only are people there to celebrate work that I've done that they're a fan of, so why would I knock that in any way, shape, or form? But also, uh, it brings people joy to be there, and bringing people joy brings me joy, and so I love doing conventions. And what about your first convention? What was that like for you? Uh, well, it was uh, it was 
amazing but bittersweet. So uh, at SonicCon, <laughs> oh, at SonicCon 2010, it was in uh, uh, in tech in Dallas, Texas. Um, it was amazing. It was the first time I saw anything like that. There were actual literal hedgehogs there. It was there to like part of the thing raised money for uh, for hedgehogs, which was really mm-hmm. cool and to get them adopted. Uh, we, we can't have them here in Los Angeles because they're invasive fe- species. So, uh, so you're right over there. Sorry, my <laughs> wife just hit something. Uh, so uh, they're, an, they're an invasive species. We can't have them here. Else, I would I would have a pet hedgehog right now. Um, yeah. I could because you, you can in Texas, right? Yes, yes, they yeah. actually do have them. They have breeders here. Actually, one breeder just moved to Alabama. Oh wow! So yes, you yeah. can have them here, but hell, I mean, we have wild hogs and I bet. armadillos, yeah. <laughs> yeah. and yeah, yeah. And actually, just so people know, it's oh. hogs are so abundant out here that. If you see them on the side of the road, if you're out in the country, you can actually pull over and just shoot them right then and there. Whoa. Because they do so much damage to yards. They right, tear yeah. everything up and they keep <laughs> multiplying. So there is no control over them right now. Yeah, right, right. Jeez. But yeah, I know how invasive they can be. <laughs> um, but anyway, at that convention, uh, which was lovely and there were so many people there and they were great. Uh, the panels were incredible and, and I got to meet and hang out with the rest of the cast of 06, which I had only met uh, Jason who did Sonic. Um, mm-hmm. i had only met him in passing. We, we recorded one thing together uh, and we went out and partied and did karaoke. And it was, it was <laughs> absolutely amazing. Uh, but we, uh, that is also when we found out that Sega was moving on from four kids productions and recasting a bunch mm. of us and the fans kind of knew it before we did, which was pretty crazy. <laughs> uh, have you heard of leapfrog letter factory? No, but it sounds really fun. Whatever it is. <laughs> I don't think I can do that game anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, they do have a couple of breeders. I think the nearest one now closest to Houston is actually in Lubbock. So mm-hmm. I want one, but I got eight cats, and I don't know what would have happened. That is a lot of cats. Yeah, and this room is full of Sonic stuff, so I don't know what the hedgehog's going to think. Like, what the heck? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, every time I Google letter S, I always look for silver. Every and I look for Yaku when I Google the letter Y. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Like I said, it's like about eight hours for the nearest breeder from Houston. Mm, so, mm. Yeah. But actually, I have three dogs, and I think we have eight cats now outside. So, Wow. Yeah. <laughs> there are Outside cats don't really exist in Los Angeles because we have coyotes. So if they exist, oh. they don't exist for long. <laughs> well, we have the hawks and the owls, but. Yeah, yeah. And raccoons. And po- I'm out in the country, though. I'm actually north of Houston. Okay, cool. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm in the On suburbs. two acres. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. We're smack dab in the city of West Hollywood. Hey, city's good sometimes. Sure, sure. So let's talk about a little bit of fun stuff. What do you like to do for hobbies? Well, uh, that's a great question. Uh, <laughs> my favorite thing to do is I wake up very early every morning and and I uh, go to the beach and I surf as much as I possibly can. Yeah, I become, I, and that happened. I, I surfed for a long time. Um, about 10 years ago is when I started. Uh, and I stopped because it was hard. I was also like, I, w- I, I owned a, a restaurant. I was running a bar. Uh, it was hard working like late nights and then getting up early and surfing. And then, oh, so I stopped for years. And then over the pandemic, it was like the only thing I could do. So uh, it was it was freedom and meditation and exercise all in one. Mm-hmm. And I haven't stopped. I try to go as, as much as humanly possible. I, I go, I don't know, three to four times a week. Um, but the Pacific mm-hmm. Ocean is really cold. Uh, so, you know, I grew up in New Jersey where in the summer, the, elect- the, the Atlantic Ocean uh, gets warm in the summer. 
But out mm -hmm. here, it never acts. So you're wearing a wetsuit mostly year round. There's about a month or two where you don't have to. August. Yeah, yeah, usually August. <laughs> you just see That's... the beaches here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you can't surf really here at the, these beaches. No, because you guys are the Gulf Coast, right? Yes, we are yeah. the Gulf Coast. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they'll say that they can, but I don't see where. <laughs> no. Well, and I think there's, uh, I, I, nerding out here, I'm pretty sure there are some wave pools down there that a lot of surfers go to. Like they, yes. they have made, they've, they've created that thing where they can create a, a, the perfect wave in a pool. Uh, oh, and, wow. and surfers pay a lot of, they're so expensive. Uh, and mm -hmm. surfers pay a lot of money to go down there uh, and, uh, and surf these pools. It was 99 cool. degrees Fahrenheit, June 17th. That would be wow. hot for Maryland. I will say that's yeah. pretty hot for Maryland. I went to college in Maryland. Ah, I actually lived two years up in the D.C. area. So. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, it snowed, snowed three feet, then four feet, and I said, I'm back in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> what years were those? Uh, let's see, 86 through 88. Mm, cool. So now, of course, I'm saying my age, but we won't go there. Hey, listen, <laughs> you and me both, buddy. <laughs> I used to live in New York for like about two years. The only thing is, it. how do you say it? Um, I don't think New York was ready for a Texan because like, I felt like <laughs> I, I was too nice. So like, Who's that? Why is she being so nice? What's she? Right, like, right. Oh, I'm from Texas. It's just our natural ability to be polite. That's so. right. Absolutely. Now, with the serpent, I can definitely see that as a getaway. Oh, yeah. yeah. That would... You just don't think about anything else. But, you know, first of all, if you start getting distracted, it's dangerous. The ocean's dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. There are waves are dangerous. I've I've gotten held under before where it was just like, oh, that was really scary. Um, or if you get bonked in the head with a surfboard, I mean, it can knock you out. So ooh, you just got to, you have to be careful. Um, but it is, it's just a lovely, uh, I like connecting with nature. I love camping. Um, I, I like doing anything where I can get out of the city uh, and, and do something, you know, that connects me with the earth. Uh, so ooh. it's just, it's a good way to, gr to ground yourself in the morning. Would you go skydiving? I would. <laughs> I don't think. I don't think my wife would allow me anymore. But you know what? Here in Houston, we we got these really cool things for it's an indoor skydiving thing, and that's a much that I would do. do. Yeah, yeah. You can't die doing that. But there are just too many. <laughs> there are too many accidents. I want to do it. I, I I just love the idea of that. But um, you know, now I'm I'm so happily married that uh, I. I don't want to die. <laughs> yeah, you only push out like, hey, Pete, I gave you a sonic backpack, the wrong one. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> Are you able to request doing an audition for Silver? I don't know that they're, they have to have plans to bring Silver back before I ask to audition for it. And, you know, I have uh, obvious. So if I'm, if you're a professional actor, um, I have a manager and I have agents and I have a, t I have a whole team behind me. So, of course, mm -hmm. that team is always, if, as soon as Sonic announces a project, uh, or as soon as Sega announces a project, they reach out uh, to figure out what's going on. Um, so, if Silver comes back, I, I am sure I will have the opportunity to at least read for Silver. But, you know, they're, yeah. in the, uh, they're putting celebrity voices all over the place, so who knows who will take my place. You know, today from talking to other voice actors, it's just it's such a competition nowadays. It's it is. not even funny. It is. And like, you know, I understand the rationale behind some of the stuff where people think that if they put a, a recognizable voice behind the thing, that more people it'll bring more people. But I don't think that that's true. I think you just put the best actor back there, in my opinion. Yeah. You mean like, well, I mean. I know people are going crazy about about the upcoming Sonic movie three. You think mm -hmm. they're going to put Silver in it at any point? I don't know. I have some in, inside information that they probably aren't going to. He's not going to be in the third one, but I don't know. Yeah. Well, there's supposed to be a fourth and a fifth. You know, like side. Hey. Story. So fingers crossed <laughs> for Sonic Four. 
I'm crossing for you. I'm crossing yeah. for you. Well, because I, I think I think Jim Carrey's only signed on to do this one more. So maybe maybe they go with the maybe they go with the silver storyline after that. I don't know. We'll see. Oh no, but that means Sonic's gonna have to die and get kissed by a girl. <laughs> well, he's dead. Well, you never know. That's right. But I mean, it's Hollywood. It it could be like PG thirteen. <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> now going back a little bit with this it's with all the new anime mm -hmm. and cartoons and everything that everybody's trying to come out with do you think that it's good to have a good variety with all the new people trying to get into voice acting or do you think that's going to make it even more competitive for i think both of those things are true i, th I think it's great to have a good variety and i think the more things that are made uh, and that goes not just for voice acting, but for anything, you know, we have, it's not just network anymore and it's not just cable It's it's streaming and there's, everybody has a streaming channel. So that means they need, they need all of these other, uh, they need all these other shows to, to fill those things. So there are that many more things to audition for, but, um, also it seems like the same people are working all the time. Uh, so I welcome a good competition, you know, like that's mm -hmm. in my, in, 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 in my opinion, you train as an actor and you keep working at that thing uh and eventually you're just you you will break through people will understand and the best actor will get the job yeah definitely now you said that you have a production company mm -hmm. do you have people that you that you want them to go through to maybe audition for stuff uh yeah usually so like if we've created something like, let's say we wrote something, uh, we will, we, we, you know, we reach out to a casting director uh, because they're, they're a very integral part of the business, uh, which mm -hmm. for kids production was a production house, but also a casting house. So that was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, they're, uh, casting directors are an integral part of the business because they know how to find the right actors. They, they put out breakdowns, they, they watch the auditions, they narrow it down and then bring us a, a specific amount of actors to the production later on that's interesting yeah uh, I, I ask these questions because i told you earlier that i do manage a couple of people so yeah that is interesting yeah because i do know that there's actually some places here where they just put it online and saying here's casting go audition for it here yeah i mean in smaller markets it's probably different um but even like you know so i um i'm a i am I have family in uh, New Mexico, so I auditioned for a lot of things in New Mexico, and that went from a very small market to Netflix having a studio there. And so now there are like, you know, I get called in by like four or five very strong casting directors there to audition for stuff in New Mexico. So, uh, you know, you're always just you, you again, it's all about the hard work. You just have to put in the time and the effort, no matter what it is, yeah. uh, and then just kind of go by how those markets work. So with the production company, how long did it take you to get that started? Um, well, I mean, the easy part of it was making the company. That's, that's, easy. that's you know, um, just but a the, little paperwork, but <laughs> that's exactly right. Yeah. Pay $800 and suddenly you have a company. Um, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it really was the real answer to that is like, you know, we, my wife and I put in a ton of time and effort into writing stuff we've been together uh you know at least dating wise for about 10 years and we work really well together and so we decided this is something that we should do that we want to make art together um so we put in the time and the effort and the first thing we did was make a i i did i i kind of just stepped back and helped uh uh facilitate this i was an executive producer on it but mm -hmm. she wrote and starred in a short um and it was a mostly a female crew uh, from the director to the cinematographer, uh, like all the way down the line, it was mostly women, uh, which it was so great to just kind of back off and, and let the women who are mostly better than us at things, uh, take <laughs> the reins. Uh, and then, uh, one of my close friends and amazing actor, Lou Taylor Pucci played her brother. Uh, and Lou is, a uh, uh, you can use, if you've watched physical, uh, on Apple TV, he, uh, he plays the surfer, 
boyfriend uh, in that. He's fantastic. Um, so she he plays her brother, and uh, it's just a really, really great cast and a really beautiful story. Um, so that was the first thing we did, and that, and now we've adapted a, uh, a graphic novel, and we're pitching it as both a show and a movie right now. Very awesome. nice. Yeah. Now, I have to ask you, because I know this is one of your more popular shows, and we haven't talked about it yet. Hmm. But let's talk about Tanner Christensen. Yeah. <laughs> What's it like trying to get into the role of somebody else? Well, that's my job as an actor. Um, what I was afraid of with Tanner Christensen, Tanner Christensen, because he was uh, LGBTQ, uh, you know, obviously he's a doll, but uh, because the character himself was LGBTQ, what uh, what I was afraid of was misrepresenting the community that I'm such a strong ally for. Um, mm -hmm. And so I went to friends of mine and I said, hey, first of all, is this cool? Like, am I allowed to do this? <laughs> um, because, you know, that's, that's something that I don't want to, I, I don't want to misrepresent anybody. I don't want to take roles away from anybody. Um, but obviously, you know, they were like, it's a doll. You should do it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, and, and then the next thing was like really not, making it a stereotype and kudos to uh carlo moss and mark cope who created and wrote the show um for not making i mean he was the high school quarterback and at what i i don't think i've ever seen another show where uh where there was a a, a gay high school quarterback and so i love that this kind of represented uh the lgbtq lifestyle in a different way uh and it would, I, I just wanted to make sure that I didn't, you know, I tried not to do the stereotypical gay voice. Um, I just, I, I wanted things to be just like, this is a, this is a human being. He's, he goes to high school. He has the same problems I had in high school. Uh, he just happens to like boys. And, and it was really fun to play and just so well written and so funny. Uh, and it's also, um, I, I don't know that you know this, but most of that cast were, are like, they were all professional improvisers from Los Angeles. So sometimes mm -hmm. there would be a joke in the script and then they'd be like, okay, now you guys do that take again, but like just riff. And we would just improvise and riff. And it was just the most, it was the most fun to be. And we were lucky enough uh, during the last few seasons to record at the YouTube studios here in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that setup allowed us to all be in the room together, and it was just really, really fun. Now, it's got to be hard getting into a character and then out of a character. Yeah, um, I, that's, again... I know you're a it, professional, but for I know, but people you, listening, I, it's hard to explain to them. Absolutely. So, um, and, I, and I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to be very kind about this. Uh, there are successful actors and then there are good successful actors and a good actor in my opinion can they do the work enough uh to be able to come in and out of a character so if you put the work in so i, I mean the way that i look at acting is um there's a lot of history to this character there, a, a lot happens before you see them in a movie and a lot happens after so i want to know when I look at a character, I want to know everything that happened to them before we meet them. Because mm -hmm. then when we do meet them, every choice that I made is informed by what happened beforehand. So I try to create that history. And I look at the same thing, you know, even with comedy and even with VO stuff, I try to put that work in. Very good. Because I know it, I know it is hard and it's hard to explain to people that concept. Yeah, and it is. It is. <clears throat> and like I said, I definitely know in listening to actors and actresses, voice actors and actresses even, because they have to get in and out of that voice too. Yeah, I mean, I feel like you know what it's like even with uh, being a novelist. You know, you, you're, you're in the voices of your characters uh, and you have to, you're not, you're not just writing something because it sounds good. You're writing something because that's what the character would do. Uh, mm -hmm. And I feel like, yeah, I feel like, you know, that it's the same thing as writing novels. It is. And it's all in the head. And it's, yeah, 
and it is hard to get it out. Let me say it is hard <laughs> oh, to get it out. <laughs> hey, listen, if acting was easy, everybody would do it. Who doesn't want to play pretend for a living? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, this is it's true. Hard. Yeah. So is there a place where people can find you at where they can look you up besides IMDb or where they can? I mean, uh, I have, I'm, I, it's at Pete Cook. Whoa, I couldn't even say my own name for a second. It's at <laughs> Capella across all social media. So uh, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook, for those who still use Facebook. Um, <laughs> yeah, you can find me uh, at, at Pete Capella. Um, if you, uh, if you want to send fan email, it's Pete Capella at gmail.com. A lot of people have figured it out, so why not just say it? Um, <laughs> I mean, it's not like I hit, it wasn't a very hard one to uh, figure out. Um, yeah. And, and like, you know, I love hearing from fans. I love, I, I love what people do. I love that people love, uh, this Sonic world so much. I love that people love the most popular girls in school world. I, it's just fandom to, I, I was such a huge comic book fan growing up. We used to write letters to Marvel nonstop begging them to make Marvel. movies, begging them. Uh, it's so funny because, you know, back when I was in high school and that was the mid nineties. So now I'm aging myself. I figured I'd, you know, lend that to you, Greg. Uh, <laughs> oh, damn. Uh, I was in the Navy. <laughs> <laughs> but Marvel literally <clears throat> said to us, they had no plans in being in feature films. Mm -hmm. And look at the Marvel cinematic universe now. Well, you're going to laugh at this, but I actually, when I was in the Navy, I was actually collecting at the time the Infinity Gauntlet, the Infinity War. Yes, and the, yeah. And it came out in the mid-90s, early yes, mid-90s. Absolutely, yep. So I am actually a diehard Marvel fan, so I'm giving you kudos <laughs> for that. Yeah, so am I. Yeah, I, I love them. Marvel's, hey, Anubis. I <laughs> We're not getting into movies sooner. That's probably uh, very true. Yeah, oh, I feel like the the heads of Marvels are kicking themselves, but Marvel now isn't kicking anything but their giant bank account. Yeah, mm -hmm. no kidding with that. <laughs> so, let's go ahead and ask: Who's your favorite character? I'm okay. My first answer uh, would would immediately go to Wolverine, but. I, upon thinking about it a second longer, it is Gambit. Hands down is my favorite Marvel Ooh, character. New Orleans. Yeah, yeah, he's a Southern, <laughs> he's a thief. He's a thief that became a superhero. <laughs> I think that's so, again, I like, I, I, the reason those two, those two are my favorite characters. Um, first of all, I grew up, like X-Men was the thing for me. And Chris, Chris Claremont's X-Men in the, in the mid nineties is just, I almost wore my Chris Claremont X-Men t-shirt to this oh. interview. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I was putting an audition on tape beforehand and I left this. this <laughs> off. Uh, but uh, I, I love that. I, I love the complex. The reason I love Marvel over DC, like I grew up, you know, loving Batman as well. But um, to me, it's about the complexity of the character, like how deep uh, and how really how tortured they are. And so both of those characters kind of had a tortured early life and and it's what made them who they are and i i just love that and also gambit's so cool he but throws mm -hmm. playing cards how cool is that <laughs> well i have to give hugh jackman much credit for <clears throat> playing the role of wolverine he did mm -hmm. excellent are you gonna watch yeah. the third movie that's coming deadpool 3 right oh i can't wait i can't wait. yeah he's gonna be coming out in deadpool 3 so yeah yeah, I mean, there's a guy. So we, what we used to do when we wrote Marvel letters was uh, also send our dream cast to them. We'd be like, okay, here, if you're making X Men, here's who you should put as the and and so when Hugh Jackman was announced, I was like, wait, an Australian guy, and he's not short, uh, you know, because Wolverine is like five foot four in the comic mm -hmm. book, something like that, five four, five five, um, and I was like, oh, this guy, he's not going to be any good, and then he just blew it out of the water but again he's a dedicated studied actor who puts everything into the role so you know uh I, it drives me insane because i was one of them uh when fans are like no they can't do this because of this anybody can do anything if they put the work in yes and i have to say from like you said the time period 
putting in your favorite actors, you can see a big difference. I mean, they've had, I mean, that was the time of Patrick Swayze and Tom Cruise. Oh, yeah, Cruise we were, we, and, yeah, we were, yeah, we were pitching Tom Cruise for stuff. We were pitching, we, I mean, we were pitching Clint Eastwood or Robert De Niro for Wolverine mm-hmm. at the time uh, because they were, all, they were young enough, but that was 30 years ago almost. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Bad and words. I said almost, Bad words. but it definitely was 30 years ago. It was I know, 30 I know. years ago. I know. Oh, Lordy. Wow. I you know. Make me cry. <laughs> yeah, you and me both. You and me both. <laughs> but I do want to thank you for being on the show. It's been a pleasure. Mm-hmm. It's really fun. If there's any questions anybody has before we head out, go ahead and shoot them up. You have to say the yeah. famous silver line. You know, the famous I'm happy to say this. Well, which one? Because there's there's two of them that people love. I'm sure everyone in the chat's gonna say it. <laughs> the it's no use one. Is that mm-hmm. is that what you want me to say? Sure. It's no use. <laughs> Very nice. Yep. It, there. It just popped yeah. up. <laughs> there it is. Yep. <laughs> there you go, Noah. But. Definitely, thank you for being on and to let everybody know Saturday we are going to be at a convention, but I'm actually doing a show Saturday at 1 p.m. and it is going to be with Marlene Sharp. So, hope to see everybody then. And until then, adios.